Hi, I'm Eric Jurgensen, a hobbyist blacksmith based in Oklahoma City. Welcome to my basement shop. I've been wanting to make a wedging hot cut hardy Brian Brazil style for some time. I recently acquired some one and a quarter square 4140 which seemed perfect for the task. So I made with the induction heater a wedging hot cut hardy. But due to an error it ended up a little a little too small. So this gets relegated to my smaller anvil and I went ahead and made another one. This one turned out just right for the larger anvil and for comparison purposes I used my coal forge to make this one and the induction heater to make this one. Let's see how it went. I should have gotten a fire brick to prop this on. Um, it's more relaxing for the smith and it cuts down on those sparks. You can see other marks on the coil near the lower right where I've done that. Now watch the colors run on this. See the colors are building from the outside and then coming to the inside. That effect is actually, that heat effect is actually all the way through the stock in the coil. And the same thing is happening as we're reaching incandescence. The heat is going to come from the outside and go to the inside. That's a skin effect. It is caused by the oscillation frequency of the induction heater. And these smaller units, um, like the LH-15A, uh, operate at like 30 kilohertz on up to 80 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz. Uh, at those ranges, the penetration isn't very deep, as you can see here. The larger units can operate and resonate at lower frequencies and the skin effect isn't quite so pronounced. Even so, you're putting heat deeper into the metal than is actually possible with a propane or coal forge. So you have some theoretical advantages in the, in the heat. The difficulty is, and this occurs with the coal forge too, or the propane forge, I'm not seeing from where I'm standing that I'm not really getting enough heat to the center of this. Uh, so I'm going to get a little more fish mouthing than I otherwise would but it's going to be good enough to get started. Also note that the length of that heat physically, uh, not in time, is a bit short. Another example of why I should have propped. And notice that I'm a little bit twisted. I had the handle high as I was hammering. I'll correct that in the next heat. The other thing I want you to see, and I haven't sped this up, watch it bounce. I'm actually holding it down fairly hard and it's bouncing up. Um, I didn't think about that much at the time, but it was very irritating. And that's because the heat ends too soon and I'm, I'm hitting relatively stiff metal, which means it's bouncing. Note that I've shoved this through the coil a little bit to lengthen the heat. And I'm just letting heat run to the nose of the taper. This is going to give me a longer heat and make the operation more pleasant. Overall, this is an area that the coal or propane forge really would have a benefit. There's a ton of total heat. It's wasted all over the place in a coal and propane forge. But that means that a longer heat in this huge stock is easier. But in any case, this is going to work out. I'm going to kind of tidy up this taper and then we'll move on to the fullering. And at this point, the, there's enough heat penetrating all the way into the metal and so on, and the bar itself is warming up. So I'm getting pretty good heats. It's no longer so frustrating uh, with the bouncing and so on. Um, one more pass after this, and uh, we'll then be able to move on to the fullering. One more pass to taper this. Uh, one of the things that does happen with my other camera, the one we're watching the anvil with. It's infrared filters, not terribly good, and those just look hotter than they are. When I'm putting this back into the coil, it's not as hot as it's looking on the camera. And as you can see, the heat is moving out to the end there pretty nicely. And I should have used a fire brick, as you can tell from the flame.
let those flames go out. So here we are. I like the taper. Let's push it a little through, a little further through, and let's do the fullering. I'm going to make a mistake with the fullering. I didn't want to have it fully inch and a quarter because my hardy hole is one inch. I wanted maybe inch and an eighth. Um, so I went to near the edge of the taper and then started the fullering right there. Well, I didn't count for the fact that there'll be some drawing in. It kind of sucks in at the edges um, and that narrows it too much. Which works out to be fine because my other anvil, which is a Wilkinson, um, has a 7 8 hardy hole and this one is going to be perfect for that. And we'll make another one with the coal forge. And I'll make sure that I put the fuller in the right place for that one. One thing I'm doing is I'm flipping it over because the penetration isn't going to be quite the same. And the other thing is not only am I straightening it, I'm knocking in the bulge. That way I don't get uh, a cold shut there and I like the tidy look of the nice square edge rather than having the bulge on either side from the fullering. Still going with about 60 second heats. Uh, you just need some, with this power of a unit and with this thickness of the metal it just takes some time to bring everything to heat. Not really any worse than uh, coal forge, but all right, it's time to mark it. That was a short, as in, in time, heat, and I'm just marking out where I want to cut. I'm not trying to do a whole lot of cutting now. Um, and it's at a low heat, so I can see what I'm doing. For marking this curved edge hardy, which is actually one I welded up with a, an arc welder, um, that curved edge makes the marking awkward. The curved edge is good at penetrating for the cutting itself, but it makes the marking awkward. Alright, so we're going to go for a, a nice deep heat here uh, so we can get a lot of cutting done on the next round. Okay, so here I am cutting it. Having a little trouble getting it in the groove, but now I'm going well. And what I'm finding is, oops, I've kind of closed up the other side. Um, I'm sort of forging a cold shut on the, on the side I've already cut that I'm hammering on. So the solution for that is I need to flip it more often so that I don't forge it shut and have trouble getting it on when I turn it over. So just a few taps, so let's get it over to the other side. Well, I'm trying to do pretty hard blows here, not just taps. And as you can see, it's uh, penetrating pretty quickly. Okay, another good heat, and we should be able to get it too. See, I'm cutting it from two sides because that's going to leave the marks mostly right for the way I'm going to spread the metal. Uh, and so I'm going to get nearly through, and then I'm going to cut it sort of lengthwise. And you can see it's starting to flop a little bit, so I'm getting close. Now I'm going for that lengthwise cut to cut that final membrane out. Uh, coming out really quick, and we're just about done. There we go. And let's get the tool off the anvil so there's no mistake. And that was kind of hot. Didn't need to hold that very long. Now this bit of metal here on the end heats really nicely. It's isolated from the rest of the metal so we're not drawing the heat out very much because the fuller isolates it. Um, and so I'm going to try to flatten that down back into the fuller area um, and I'm going to drop it every once in a while. A little hard to hold that taper. I'm pointing out that there's a little bit of a crease there. Start of a cold shut so I'm going to try to forge that out. Um, didn't get all of it but it was very easy to dress up in the grinder later. And as you can see, we're growing in size, so we're starting to run out of ability to fit into this foil. One of the downsides of the induction heater is 
your stock grows and gets funny shapes and you are not going to fit in the coil. This will be the last time we can use this coil. I'm going to have to switch coils after this. But if you keep a flare nut wrench handy, coil switches don't take too long. Uh, certainly not as long as trying to light a coal fire. So here we are with my largest coil. I made this one to make a two pound hammer out of a one and a quarter stock. Now look what I'm doing here. I'm actually making this vertical not only to put more of the blade edge into the coil but also that actually gives the uh, induction more room to make eddy currents. I'll make another video talking about how the eddy currents work in the magnetic fields and so on and I'll talk about that in more detail sometime in the future. Now at this point it doesn't even fit in the big coil and I'm having to heat it one side at a time. That really isn't much of a drawback because the anvil draws heat out of this thin metal really fast and the other side would have cooled down anyway. So still doing some painting. I'm about to start switching to the flat face. Um, you'll notice I've switched to my cross peen hammer for drawing. Um, still using the cross peen but I'm about to flip it over and do some planishing. Uh, see I did. I can't see when that happened but I know I did it. Alright, so we're going to planish everything out until I'm satisfied that all we need to do is some grinding. As you can see, I angled it again. I've been doing that. It uh, heats much more quickly. you got to watch it though. You can actually kind of melt the edges sometimes. So there it is, finished except for the grinding and the heat treatment. So now let's look at doing the same project with a coal forge. Coal forge has several advantages. The primary one being that it has a very high heat output compared to my induction heater. It also has a relative ease for heating awkward shapes. Further, there's a little less scaling due to the low oxygen atmosphere in the fire. Now it does have some disadvantages. One is that it's dirty, not just the dust and smoke, but also the clinker that builds up in the bottom and clings to the work in small quantities. But really for me the primary disadvantage is how slow it is to come to full heat. This fire had been going for about 20 minutes and it still isn't really up to heat. As you can see, pulling this out, it's cold and we've been heating it for quite a while. Okay, so back into the fire. Let's keep this thing going. And a little warmer. Also, I'm turning it each time. Okay, that's starting to show a little more heat. Turned again for even heating. All right, we'll flip it over for one last bit to even the heat out, and I think we're ready to forge. Sure enough, now we got ourselves a forging heat. And, unlike the first heat on the induction heater, there's not going to be any bouncing. Unfortunately, the other camera didn't cooperate on this part, so I don't have visual of it. But, all in all, I think I got three, maybe four times as much forging done with this first heat than I did with the first heat of the induction heater. Alright, now back in for another heat. At this point, the coal forge is up to heat, and now we'll perform really up to what it can do.
So here we are in two minutes and we have it back up to heat. I'm not even going to need all of that heat to finish up the forging. In fact, when I went back and looked at the timing, despite all the time it took to do that first heat, I did the taper in the same amount of time with the coal forge as I did with the induction heater. As you can see, the coal forge, once it's up to heat, really comes into its own. I could have done two tapers in the same time it took me to do on the induction forge. And a propane forge, if it were up to heat and large enough, offers even more advantages for doing multiple pieces at the same time. But as a hobbyist, I'm not often doing multiple pieces at the same time. And both of those would have taken longer to heat up than the entire project took with the induction forge. Here are the finished hardies. I'm really happy with both of them. But notice that the near one, the one done in the coal forge, is pitted. That's because the impurities in coal that make clinker also stick to the metal and get pounded in unless you spend a lot of time brushing them off. Another advantage to the induction heater. In conclusion, next time I need to make one of these, I'll use the induction heater. If I need to make three or four, I'll consider getting out my propane forge. I also learned a couple other things, or at least was reminded. With stock this big, soak time. It's important in the coal forage, the propane forage, and in the induction heater. And during heat treating, I decided to make another coil. It's about three and a half inches by three quarters in the middle, and it's designed to be just perfect for this. I'm sure I'll find another use for it, many other uses for it over time. Uh, it was great for, for doing the heat treating of this blade. It would have also been handy when I was actually forging out the blade, especially the planishing part at the end where a full heat across it would be good. So, as Jim Koch says, forge on and make beautiful things. See you next time.